Kanye West, also known as whatever Kanye West is called these days. Um, I think that he is metabolizing a lot of energies, a lot of different energies that are kind of hard to hold together. Um, and so sometimes, because he's a he's you know a very gifted person um, at at channeling things from into music from from the collective, and so that um, because he's metabolizing so much energy, that energy can move him around sometimes into places that seem you know a little unhinged uh, that that kind of deviate from, you know, and he's looking for, for an anchor. He's looking for, for a tether and grasping onto things that may not actually be that reliable. Mm. And I guess I would, um, yeah, and also because he's, you know, so famous, I mean, he's, but part of those energies is all the projections that are loaded onto him and the judgments. Uh, I don't envy him. And, you know, if he goes off on something and becomes unhinged and goes through that journey, then um, I pray for him that he will be received with welcome and love upon his return. Thank you. David Icke. David Icke. Um, he is, his, his role is to apply a certain lens and inhabit a certain mythology about the way that the world works and to, to develop that because it is a mythology or a world story that is an important way station for a lot of people as they exit the old story and are in search for a new one. And here's a way station. And that mythology that he offers, I don't mean that mythology in the sense of it's just fantasy. It offers, um, it, it illuminates a lot about the world. And it also obscures a lot about the world. And there's a lot of truth that is unavailable from within the, the capital C conspiracy theory um, to explain the workings of the world. Um, and there's also a lot of, of truth in it. And ultimately, there are world stories that contain and include the one that he offers in a much, much bigger picture. Daryl Davis. Daryl Davis? I don't know who that is. Daryl Davis is a Black man who befriended members of the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, and yes, yeah, yeah, I know who that is. Yeah. Um, yeah, he is um, a servant of the spiritual being called the Universal Brotherhood of Man. Um, And his uh, soul's journey is um, part of a, of a mass movement now to learn to see the divine in all human beings and to refuse the degrading stories that we are offered about our fellows. And so he's um, helping create the template for that or strengthen the template for reverence, for, for seeing beneath the opinions, however hateful they may be, and not accepting those as who you really Great. are. <laughs> your, your, your video is froze for a second. I want to ask one more, and then I'm going to pass the this mic to- This is a fun to, game. To, this is a fun game, by the way. This is a fun game. Yeah. <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon Musk, yeah. Um, Uh, 
yeah, I've been talking about a receptacle for people's projections and judgments. Um, he's he's kind of a mythic figure uh, in the sense that he's larger than life, um, which makes him a projection screen for you know all kinds of of archetypes that 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 people associate with him. Uh, he's somebody who's who's very adept at holding a reality for others to step into. That's how he creates these companies. When he says something shall be, people believe him. And um, I, I wrote one essay that referenced him quite a lot. That if most people, if you say, well, you know, what's the future going to be like? They take that as um, an invitation to predict. Whereas Elon Musk will take that as an invitation to create. Oh, I'll tell you what it'll be like. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what's going to happen because I have agency in this. So one reason that he's so appealing to people is that uh, is his strong embodiment of sovereignty, of agency. Sovereignty meaning actually, the word actually means above the king, above mm -hmm. rule, above the reign. So, so sovereign is super, right? Super reign. Like, so you're, you're um, not a subject. And that kind of, and okay, and there's, I'm sure, many, many other dimensions to his personality. Um, I've never met him, you know, but I, I, I know people who know him. And I'm sure he's a, I know that he's a complicated person, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, you know, as a public figure, as a mythic figure, you know, um, this is, this is, and, and as a human being, this is one of the things that he, brings to the world as a reminder of our agency. And, you know, he doesn't, in my opinion, he doesn't always use that for good things that, that you know, um, that I support and that are part of my vision of the future. And sometimes he does. And, but it's that, that the, but his appeal, his charisma is because of his embodiment of that principle of sovereignty. He has no problem being here and saying, here's how it will be. Aspen, do you want to throw one in there or you want to go on with your, your question about- Oh gosh, <laughs> do I want to throw one in there? Um, I don't think I have one off the top of my head. I'm just really enjoying this. Um, I mean, the Kanye West, wow, that really blew me away. The metabolizing of energy, that feels so true when I hear it. And I just love this. See, the, let me tell you what, what, how I'm doing what I'm doing here. Yeah, It's really simple. I just find a part of me that loves these people. Yeah. The true nature of someone is only available through love. Mm. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of projections, you know, of one's one's own shadow, but if you find the part of you that that loves them, then you can see so much, so much more. 